تصمیمت گرفتی یا نه؟ بله چی شد بنا خیلی دخترم؟ الان با بگم Usually, in order to be able to enjoy the work, a film requires a suspension of disbelief, a willingness to let go of the fact that you know that all of this is made up, and that the people you see on screen are just actors. But Asghar Farhadi's 2011 Oscar-winning film A Separation hardly required any suspension of disbelief. It's both the most immersive and a realist film I've ever seen, and it made me wonder how has the film achieved this? At first it seemed that the obvious answer was to point to the contents of the story, since there are no far-fetched plot points, no fantasy elements, nothing that couldn't happen or hasn't happened in real life. It's a story of what happens when a woman seeks a divorce from her husband, an act that unwittingly causes a series of consequential events to unfold. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I wasn't giving the filmmakers enough credit. This isn't the first Iranian film to explore these kinds of issues, nor will it be the last. So what made this film worthy of being honoured with an Academy Award? What I realised is that it's not just a story that allows us to become quickly invested into the characters. The form of the storytelling also plays a crucial role in creating an immersive experience. The opening scene of A Separation is one of the simplest ones ever created, yet it effortlessly introduces us to the world of the story. All story worlds have rules, rules that the audience need to be aware of to know what's possible in the film. The rules of A Separation are the laws of contemporary Iran and the restrictions that is placed on the society. In just a short scene we are shown everything that we need in order to engage in this story. The first shot of the film puts the camera in the point of view of a judge who's listening into the arguments presented forward by the characters of Nader and Simin. And because of this camera placement, the notion that we are experiencing the story from within is immediately and subconsciously communicated to us. This adds to the immersive feel. We're not looking into the story from afar, we're right there in the middle of the action. We're discovering the story alongside the characters. It's an effective technique which is often used by the Cohen brothers. And we're placed into the courtroom with no fanfare. There are no sweeping shots of the city to welcome us. No extravagant or cinematic introductions. We are simply placed into this world in a down-to-earth manner that reflects the down-to-earth content. The use of a continuous take for the first scene further adds to the real-world feel. We're here in the courtroom, and we're gonna stay here for however long Nader and Simin stay here. Mahmoud Kalari's camera work doesn't call attention to itself. It's restrained, stylistically understated and dignified. Like most of the film, the camera is often handheld at eye level and employs a natural focal length to not distort the image too much. Kalari's cinematography enables a level of naturalism that rivals documentaries. But since this is a work of fiction, it's more polished than a documentary. Documentaries sacrifice being able to have perfect setups and multiple takes so that they can capture genuine truths on camera. A separation captures the truths without compromising the setup. The use of a scenario where the characters have to present their views to a judge allows for a genuine reason why two people would speak out loud what they already know. This means that the exposition is unforced, natural, and through the exchanges of the three characters in this scene, we understand everything that we need to understand. We understand that this isn't as simple as right and wrong, good and evil. These are complicated, three-dimensional characters. We understand that Simin wants to go abroad with her husband and daughter, but Nader, with his elderly father who suffers from Alzheimer's, has a genuine reason as to why he wants to stay. A gentle submission by Simin when she's confronted by the judge to explain what she means when she says that she doesn't want her daughter to grow up in this situation reminds us that in Iran, women are inferior in the eyes of the law. Thus, we get a hint as to why she wants to go abroad in the first place. But like the rest of the film, this point isn't forced onto us. 
It's simply showing the reality of life in Iran through a small number of characters who are all just trying to make the best of their situation. The film feels real because it's not trying to enforce a moral viewpoint onto the audience. It's not saying these guys are right, these guys are wrong. It's gently welcoming us into the world of these characters and saying, hey, in the real world, things are more complicated. Add on top of all of this, authentic acting. And you get a creation which hardly requires any suspension of disbelief. You get a film that allows people worldwide to connect with its intra-societal issues. You get an Oscar-winning film.